Named after one of the greatest upsets in Ryder Cup history, Miracle of Medina ended last season with his own surprise win in the Group 3 Somerville Tattersall Stakes at Newmarket. Now, back in full training as a three-year-old, his trainer Mark Usher hopes that the son of Milkit Mick can once again defy the odds, but this time in the 2,000 guineas. Well, I bought him at uh, Donkster Sales, at the Yearling Sales there, um, and he was uh, Andrew Balding, um, was selling him, uh, Andrew Spaulding was selling him, um, and um, I liked him as an individual. He was a good walker, quite an athlete. He was small, the dam uh, smart ass. She'd had two uh, runners and two winners uh, out of the only two foals she'd had. So there was little bits to like about him. He was small, but he was next. He's a great athlete, a great walker, and uh, that's the sort of horse I, I like. And um, you know, so we bought him very cheaply, three grand. So it was a great buy. But the same sales, I, I bought another one cheaply, where I thought was equally a good a walker. And one thing she turned out to be no good. So it, it just you know, swings and roundabouts, really. And once you got him home from the sales and started working him at the start of last year and last season, when did he start to show you that he might have some real promise? Pretty early on. You know, he, he was quite keen uh, when, when we first started to work him, so we were just sort of trying to settle that down a little bit, but he showed us plenty of natural ability pretty quickly, you know. Either, either you know, he was much better than the others or they were all pretty useless, you know what I mean? That was the way it was. No, he always showed a fair bit. And so his sort of constant improvement throughout the season, was that expected? Well, he was incredibly green first time out of Goodwood. He just sort of broncoed down the, the, um, down the straight there. And oddly enough, when we took him back and ran him in the Richmond, he ran badly. I don't think he likes Goodwood. Um, but then he went to uh, Sandown and finished fourth. He ran a good race. He, he sort of started to, so the penny started to drop with him. And then he won at Lingfield. And, yeah, he did. He certainly kept improving. Physically, he was, because he, he, although he's small now, he was you know, very small and quite weak then, you know. And then going into that race at Newmarket, the, the Group 3, the Tattersalls race, was that win a surprise? Or would, did you kind of go there quite confident? He won at Salisbury. Um, and he, he beat Henry Candy's Treaty of Paris then. I know they thought a lot of that, and that was a subsequent winner at York. Um, so I sort of, you know, I always, I, I knew he's pretty useful and you couldn't, you know, the form was there. Um, he, and then he went to Newbury and won a listed race pretty easily. So, we're all, but then we got sort of railroaded into the York race because we'd paid for it. The prize money was so oh, good. Yeah. And I wasn't necessarily that happy with him, you know, going into it. He, he was, he was fine. He was fine to run, but he wasn't at the top of his game. Uh, I didn't think, but he ran, you know, pretty well in it. Uh, but Liam Keneary felt that it's t t certainly worth going over seven. Um, uh, and we sort of, th so we went towards Newmarket with him then. And um, he loves fast ground, it turned out. He had a break after York, fast ground, seven furlongs, Newmarket, and all fit into place, yeah. And so since then, how's he been doing over the winter and what have you done with him? Well, he had a break after that. Uh, didn't, didn't send him away from here. He was here on the walk or, or out in the paddock or wherever. And um, he sort of just had total time, downtime for November and December. Then just started cantering away in uh, January. And now just cranking him up a little bit now. He's doing some faster work. And um, I'm very happy with him. He's quite a small horse, but physically has he improved much over the winter? Yeah, I mean, he is a small horse. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I bought him for the money I did do. But he's a, he's a huge athlete uh, and he's a beautiful mover. And whilst he's grown a little bit, but he's strengthened out an awful lot, he's definitely a stronger horse than he was last year, I'd say. And the dam improved a lot as she, as she got older as well. I mean, she wasn't that brilliant, but on the other hand, she, she improved as time went on. Yeah, he looks to physically strengthened out yeah. a bit. Yeah. And so now looking ahead to the guineas, will he have a prep run? Yeah, pro probably running uh, the free handicap at Newmarket because obviously he's seven furlongs. I mean, going a mile with him is just into un un unknown territory. Um, but... We'd be mad, really, to miss out that race, especially if it dries out up there. I mean, we've had so much rain, whether it's... You never know what the weather's going to do over here. But on the other hand, I think that if it is quick ground, and the free handicap could be his race. And just talking about sort of whether he'll stay the mile for the guineas, mm -hmm. how confident can you be that he will? Because he shows a lot of speed. Yeah, he does, but he's a very relaxed horse when he's, when he's in front. He's not doing too much, you know. He's always you know, he's just pacing himself. He doesn't run on full choke or anything like that. And I think he's quite, uh, he's a very confident horse. He's a very confident horse and he's very relaxed in himself. So I think he's got every chance. 
you know, you never know till you try, truth be known. But uh, Liam certainly felt after York it'd be better to go seven. He got the seven well. I mean, he came up, quickened out the dip really well, I thought, that day. So he got that seven well. You can only hope that he get a mile, yeah. And um, ground-wise, you say, you know, he's really good on firm ground. If it came up with soft in the going description, how would that affect his chances? Um, it's difficult to know. I mean, as I say, he's a great athlete. I don't think it would you know, ruin his chances. I just think it, you know, on fast ground, it plays to his strengths and it might not play to the strengths of horses, you know, uh, that might be you know, more highly rated than him, him one through another. So he definitely goes on very, very quick ground. Um, I think he'd go on easy ground. But listen, I mean, at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're sort of going to be throwing our hat in with, you know, the best horses and, you know, you'd, need it, you'd, you'd like to think that the ground could be in your favour to, to have any sort of, sort of chance, I thought, you know. Yeah. And finally, what would it mean to you and the yard here if he was to go and run a brilliant race in the Guineas and possibly win? Well, <laughs> it'd, be, um, it'd be more than a dream if he, if he, if he got in the three. Um, but, you know, you've got to believe in the horse. He's a very confident horse. Um, I think the, horse, the form with the Charlie Hills horse that um, ended up finishing second in the Dewhurst um, is, you know, pretty solid. Uh, it would mean, a, obviously, a huge amount. I've been training many years now, and, um, you know, I've had a Group 2 winner and, and uh, listed race winners, and, and um, he, his race was a Group 3. It'd be a massive... It'd be, be like a dream. And then also, you know, I think for a small you know, operator and, and, and uh, from the breeders to the trainer to the staff to everything. Yeah, it'd be a great, great story.